Now, right across the UK, there are something like 49 local clubs bringing together people with one common interest, cannabis. They swap notes on different types of cannabis plant, different flavours even, and different ways of getting it and using it. Cannabis connoisseurs is how they like to see themselves. Now, this is by and large a Facebook phenomenon at the moment, something like 40,000 likes on the London Cannabis Club site, that's the biggest, and they're hoping the UK will follow the path of other countries, the Netherlands perhaps, Portugal, and a growing number of American states in decriminalising cannabis use and production. Uh, well, we did ask a representative from the London Cannabis Club to join us. They weren't able to do that. However, with me here is Professor David Nutt, former Chief Drugs Advisor for the British Government and uh, current Chair of the Independent Scientific Committee on Drugs. And also from Edinburgh, I'm joined by Dr Ian Oliver, an independent consultant to the UN's Office on Drugs and Crime and a retired Scottish Police Chief. Well, thank you both very much indeed for joining us. Um, David Nutt, could I, could I start with you? Um, <coughs> What do you make of this? It does seem like there is a, clearly a growing, uh, at least, uh, social media wave of support for decriminalising cannabis, and it's suggesting it works in a sort of wine-tasting sort of fashion. <clears throat> I would say this is a rational approach to an irrational law. There was no reason for cannabis ever to be illegal, and countries like the Netherlands have shown for the last 25 years you can have sensible access to cannabis, either recreationally or therapeutically, and the country actually survives. It doesn't disappear under a, a realm of pe individuals who are getting addicted or getting psychotic. So it, what we're trying to do and what these people are trying to do is allow themselves to have appropriate access to a, a relaxant or a medicinal drug without fear of getting caught and criminalised. Um, Ian Hol Oliver, there is a, a, a growing tide, isn't there, towards, um, if not legalising, decriminalising and... Uh, uh, people seem a bit more relaxed about it now. Well, I think, obviously, decriminalisation is merely a euphemism for legalisation, but there is overwhelming medical and scientific evidence about the harms associated with cannabis use, particularly with regard to young people in developing brains, because the human brain doesn't mature fully until the mid-twenties, and the earlier the onset of cannabis use, the more likely the long-term damage. And there are many other examples, as Professor Nutt full well knows, that are associated with the use and abuse of cannabis. And even if you propose that there is a medicinal benefit, and certainly there is in terms of extracts that have been taken from cannabis, there is absolutely none and no medical organization in the world would sanction or advocate the smoking of cannabis as some way in which medicinal benefits could be gained. Okay, Th let's get back to, to David Nutt on that. It's medically, it, the evidence suggests it's not good for you. It can be very bad for you. Mental illness can be a, a factor. So why on earth decriminalise? Well, as I, I've just explained, it's been decriminalised in the Netherlands for 25 years. Yeah, but that, they, doesn't, that in itself isn't... The, isn't a, no, they have lower rates. They have lower rates of drug use. It actually protects people against going to other, using other drugs. There is no evidence that cannabis really makes people schizophrenic. That was a, that was a scare that was a, a, essentially talked up by the last government in order to justify making cannabis class B. The American Medical Association several times has done definitive large reports on the medicinal value of cannabis and it's clearly been used for, it's been a medicine for 4,000 years. There was no need to take it out of the British pharmacopoeia. Queen Victoria used it regularly to deal with period pains and the pains of childhood. You know, there's, it has been a medicine. People want to use it and, and I, pr I perfectly take the point that, that has just been made. We don't want to encourage young people to use it but if middle-aged well, people... Well that would encourage young people wouldn't it? If you decriminalise it? Because everyone will get the message that actually you know, this stuff's fine. Well fascinatingly in the Netherlands, where it's decriminalised, young people, less young people use it than in this country. And they also use safer stuff, because that's the other problem with criminalisation. It's forced people down the skunk route, which is probably less pleasant and certainly likely to be less therapeutic than sticking to the traditional hash. And what these cannabis clubs are doing is bringing back cannabis which is likely to be safer than skunk. Uh, Ian Oliver, it's difficult to argue that there are many people who do use cannabis and they use it for their own medicinal reasons and they are utterly convinced that it helps them. 
Yes, of course, and I'm, I would be delighted if NICE or any other responsible organisation were able to point to specific benefits from extracts from cannabis and not from smoking cannabis. And with great respect to Professor Nutt, I really think he's being res irresponsible by referring to cannabis as medicine. It is nothing of the kind, never has been, and is probably not likely to be in its present but, but form. But just, no, just, would, you, just would, you, would you refute the, the suggestion that it can have a medicinal value? Because a lot of people feel it does. Well, a lot of people think a lot of things, and I doubt very much whether they've done informed research on, on getting their information. I've already said, and there's, one of, there's a UK company, GW Pharmaceuticals, that have used cannabis extract extracts in one of their medications and there are others that have been used and have been used globally but that is not the same as smoking cannabis which is what these UK clubs are doing and to say that Holland has not had any problems over the last 35 years that they've been toler tolerating small cannabis use is absolute nonsense. Generally speaking drug misuse in the UK is diminishing as it has been throughout Europe with the exception of certain drugs. But okay. they have other associated problems and it's a gateway drug in certain instances. OK, we'll le have to leave it there. Ian Oliver, David Nutt, thank you thank both you. very much. I know it's a debate that goes on and on, doesn't it? Thanks very much. Do stay with us here on BBC World News. Coming up on GMT...